Today, we'll be taking a look at the drive motor on this LG gas dryer. Be sure to visit appliancevideo.com where you will find thousands of repair videos on the latest technology. And for a limited time, you can save big on an annual membership and take advantage of all of our premium benefits. Appliancevideo.com. Do it right the first time. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for the proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the gas. You will need the following tools to complete this repair. To begin, you must first remove the top. In order to do so, there are three Phillips screws that will need to be removed. take these out. Then we'll have to pop this cover off. What you do is flex in, just start to lift up, set it aside. Go ahead and take these screws off. Then to remove your top, put pressure on the top, slide it back and forth and lift up. And finally set the top to the side. Now that that's set aside, the next thing we'll want to do is remove the control panel here. To do so, first we will unhook the wiring harness. It is just a pinch locking tab. Remove that. We will use a Phillips screwdriver to remove. There are two screws, one on each edge of the control console here. Next, to remove the actual piece itself, there are small locking squares on the top. And what you'll want to do is find where each one of these are and flex up on the plastic right there and pull forward. And once you get all of them, you can see it will start to disattach. Gently pull out, pull your wiring out, and set the control panel to the side. The next thing we'll need to do is remove this front panel. To do so, first we're going to open it up and take out these two screws here. They're both Phillips. Let's close the door up, set those screws to the side. Next, we are going to remove these three. course, when removing the last one, make sure you push pressure against the front. Let's slide forward, and we do have the wiring harness for the door switch on here. Simply pull out, lift up on the front, and set it to the side. Now, let's go ahead and remove the frame bracket. It's held on by two Phillips screws at the top. When we remove the second one, make sure you hold on to the bracket. Next, slide up, pull out, and set it to the side. Next, we can remove the front bulkhead with a couple of easy steps. First, we'll disconnect your LED bulb harness. Next, we'll have to remove this strain reliever. Move it to the side where you can pinch it with pliers and pull up. On the very bottom here, we have one more wiring harness. Just pinch and separate. Now, you'll have to remove these Phillips screws on the front. Now, to remove the actual bulkhead, we will have to lift up and slide out. Do the same on the other side, lift up slide out, and we will set it to the side. Now that we have the bulkhead removed, we can start to remove the drum. In order to remove the drum, what we'll have to do is release the tension on the belt first. So I want you to reach inside, 
you'll find your idler pulley, you'll find the bar to the idler here, and of course your belt is wrapping around your motor. Press up on the idler pulley to release tension, pull off the belt from the motor, and let it sag, gently let your idler fall back down. Now when removing your drum, we're going to use the belt to help pull it. Lift up, slide out, and set it to the side. Now that we have the drum removed, we have clear access to our motor assembly down here. Now the main reason why you'd be replacing your motor assembly is if the unit is not running at all. It could be making a humming noise or it could be making noise. If it's making a humming noise, one thing that I would check is make sure that there is no clothing that is stuck inside of here. As long as there's no clothing stuck in here and this moves freely, the motor should start. It should not make a humming noise. If it is doing this, it probably needs to be replaced. Also, you could be getting some type of noise. Make sure that the plastic fins in here are not damaged. You can pull on the centrifugal switch. Make sure that's actuating properly. If those are damaged, once again, it will need to be replaced. To replace your motor, first, we are going to have to take off our blower wheel down here. In order to do so, we'll take off this cover plate. It is held on by two Phillips screws. Next, what we want to do is take off this center bolt for the blower wheel. If the blower wheel is not too covered in lint or damaged, sometimes you can hold on to the blower. You can use your socket set or your drill, and you will want to go clockwise to remove it. So put it on there. We'll hold on to the blower wheel, pop it off. And then we can start to slide it out. If this does not work, if it is pulling too hard on this, you can use a wrench to grab the back portion of the pulley of the motor, hold on to that, and then take this bolt off. Now, next, start to pull the blower forward. There's a small washer in there we'll have to take out. And just kind of wiggle this out and set it to the side. Next, disconnect your Molex to your motor by pinching the edges and pulling out. Then we have two motor mounts that will need to be taken off. If you go into the side here, you'll push down and pull out. Then just drop it down and set it to the side. Do the same on this one. Try to wiggle it out of here, set it to the side. Let's lift up on the motor, slide it out of the blower housing, and then we can set this unit to the side. When installing your new motor, we will want to put it where the Molex is going toward the blower tube. So let's slide it in to the blower housing. We need to make it so that the motor mounts, which is the blue mount and the gray mount on the back, sit directly in the middle of these frame mounts. And then when we are reinstalling these, what we will do is put it on one side. There's a hook. So let's hook it on, get it in place, and then you push down to lock it. Let's do the same on the other one. Hook it on the side. There we go. Press down on this portion here. It will lock in place. Reinstall our Molex. Now we can reinstall the blower wheel. First, slide in the wheel and just get it lined up here. Then we are going to reinstall this washer, but the washer has a flat side on it. Make sure that corresponds to the flat side on the motor shaft and turn it until it fits directly inside the groove. We'll start to put this in by hand. You're not 
And then we'll tighten it by going counterclockwise, hold on to your blower. Next, we will reinstall our cover plate. It will slide in on the bottom, and then you will line up with the screw holes at the top. Let's reinstall our first screw. Found by this one. Now we can reinstall the drum. When reinstalling your drum, again, we're going to keep the belt on to help rein in, rein all the way to the back. I want you to put pressure against the drum and give it a spin to put it on the rollers. Lift up on the drum and the belt and just give it some spins to get it to where you're about three quarters the way there to the back. All right, now let's reach inside. You'll find the belt, your idler, and your motor. What we will do is, is there is a ribbed side to the belt as well as a flat side. Press your flat side against the idler. We will pull up on the idler and keep pulling the belt back. Go around your motor with the ribbed side. Gently let down on your idler. Now we can reinstall the bulkhead. When reinstalling our bulkhead, you have these teeth that will slide into these slots on the frame. And what we'll do is, is we will lean the front on the lip of the bulkhead, lift it up, and put it into one side. We'll do the same on the other. Once we have it set in, let's go ahead and give it a turn. This will draw the rest in. Now we can push these in. So lift up, push in, lift up, push in. Let's go ahead and reinstall our screws. Plug back in our wiring harness on the bottom. Let's move up to the top. Reinstall our LED wiring harness, as well as our strain reliever. Now we can reinstall the frame bracket. When reinstalling your frame bracket, you have two teeth, one on each side, that will slide into this area on the actual frame itself. So let's start on one side. Make sure they're not bent. Put it in, slide it down. Let's go to the other side, put it in, slide it down. We will reinstall our two screws. The metal likes to flex on this. So just be kind of gentle. Now we can reinstall the front panel. When reinstalling your front panel, first on the very bottom of the frame, you have two hooks. They will apply to the slide areas on the front panel. So slide it in, make sure the teeth go in the slot. Let's reinstall the door, switch harness. We have our drill ready. Let's install the first screw. Do these other two. Followed by the two inside. Now we can reinstall the console. When reinstalling our console, first we will reinstall the wiring through here. Next, you will line it up. It will drop down into the front portion. Once you get it there, push back and make sure it snaps in. We will reinstall our two screws.
bring in our harness and reinstall it to the control. Now we can reinstall the top. When reinstalling the top, you have four white pins that are lifted up. These will go inside the holes on the top. So we will drop it about midway, set it down flat and push it forward. All of our screw holes should line up. Let's bring back in our screws and our cover. What we'll do first is just reinstall the two on the ends. When reinstalling your plate, you will slide these portions into the metal down here, the hooks into the metal at the top. So slide it in. Now when you are pushing this in, you will have to flex the metal down in order to get this to pass. Slide it in. We'll get the hooks in. Reinstall our screw. And this will complete the repair. Thank you for watching another quality video from appliancevideo.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click the like and subscribe to our channel.